Hello and welcome to the Element 4 Amateur Extra Study. We're going to go ahead and get started with section uh, sub-element 1 alpha. Why is it not legal to transmit a 3 kilohertz bandwidth upper sideband signal with a carrier frequency of 14.348 megahertz? Your answer is the upper 1 kilohertz of the signal is outside the 20 meter band. 20 meters stops at 14.350. So if you're 14.348, you got 49.50 is good. But then that last upper sideband kilohertz is outside your frequency allocation. Question number two, when using a transceiver that displays the, the carrier frequency of phone signals, which of the following displayed frequencies represents the lowest frequency at which a properly adjusted lower sideband emission will be totally within the band? And that is three kilohertz above the lower band edge. So where you have phone signals, Let's just take a look at 80 meters. 3.6 is as low as you can go. So for lower sideband, 3.603 is, is as low as you can go before you start edging into the CW portion. For 40 meters, it's 7.125 is the edge. So 7.128 for extras is as low as you want to go for lower sideband, assuming you have a three kilohertz signal so that it doesn't fall below that line, 7.125 and get into the CW portion. We've got to stay within the edges. What is the highest legal carrier frequency on the 20 meter band for transmitting a 2.8 kilohertz wide upper sideband data signal? This is a math problem. So the, the highest carrier frequency for data, if we look back 20 meters, the data is in the red. So that's 14.150 minus 2.8 kilohertz gives you 14.1472 megahertz. So you've, for this exam, you've got to know where your edges are. Studying this chart, you got to know where these cutoffs are for where the letter E is. So 14.150 minus 2.8 kilohertz is going to bring you right at 14.1472 megahertz. May an extra class operator answer the CQ of a station on 3.601 megahertz lower sideband phone. Now, not every country has these same these same limits. So if you look at 80 meters, 3.600 is as low as we can go. So at 3.601, if you transmit there, you're going to fall into the CW and data portion. And that's a no-no. So the answer is no. The sideband components will extend beyond the edge of the phone band segment. Question number five, who must be in physical control of a station apparatus of an amateur station aboard any vessel or craft that is documented or registered in the United States? And the correct answer is any person holding an FCC issued amateur license or who is authorized for alien reciprocal operation. Now your cruise ships, most of them are not owned and registered in the U.S. So You've got to make sure where is that ship registered. Question number six. What is the required transmit frequency of a CW signal for channelized 60 meter operation? Without getting into it, that is just simply at the center frequency of the channel. So down here on 60 meters, the center frequencies are 5332, 5348, and you don't even need to know those for this one. You just need to know it needs to be at the center for CW. That's just the way it is. Question number seven. What is the maximum power permitted 
on the 2200 meter band. That is one watt, which is the equivalent isotropic radiated power. That means that's what's coming out of your antenna. So one watt, and you can read that on this chart. It's in really teeny tiny writing. One watt EIRP maximum. There are other requirements for this. You must register at this website and then you have to be approved to use these bands. Question number eight in one alpha is if a station in a message forwarding system inadvertently forwards a message that is in violation of FCC rules, who is primarily accountable for the rules violation? The correct answer is the control operating of the originating station. And question number nine. Except in some parts of Alaska, what is the maximum power permitted on the 630 meter band? We didn't look down there real quick, but that's five watts EIRP. Looking back at this ham chart, that is five watts EIRP, except in Alaska, within 496 miles of Russia, where the power limit is one watt EIRP. But you just need to know that the majority of it is five watts equivalent isotropic radiated power. Question 10. If an amateur station is installed aboard a ship or aircraft, what condition must be met before the station is operated? And that is its operation must be approved by the master of the ship or the pilot in command of the aircraft. And the last question in sub element one alpha, what licensing is required when operating an amateur station aboard a U.S. registered vessel in international waters? And that is any FCC issued amateur license. That's section one alpha, 49 to go. I'm Robbie W1RCP. I hope this is helpful. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel to show support. 73.